Oh yeah, keeping the video production high here at the Whole Foods parking lot in Brentwood. I don't play. I don't play. Holding the camera myself, I can play all the roles. I'm not afraid. So uh, I wanted to talk about something that I find personally really interesting because it influences very heavily what we do at the gym, but not just at the gym, the entire fitness industry altogether. And we're going to really break this down in this week's Body of Knowledge and later in the season of Body Knowledge, which if you haven't heard yet, is the podcast that myself and Dr. Andy Galpin are putting together with one of our gym members, Josh Embry. Now, what I wanted to get into and share today is just how massively influential a couple of key pieces in the battle of strength and conditioning, whether cardio is more important than weightlifting and a couple other um, spinoffs from a few key people. And I'm going to keep this really brief. And if you're interested in hearing more about it, you can go to the episodes. But it goes like this. Basically, the history of uh, fitness in the United States um, really got cracking in the 1860s and 70s. Um, under this Harvard professor, last name Winship. And he developed a lift called the Health Lift, which we currently uh, have transformed into what we know as the Deadlift. Unfortunately, this very smart top-end exercise physiologist died of a heart attack at 42. So that kind of put the kibosh on strength conditioning, or strength work for about 50 years. Fast forward into uh, the 30s and 40s, there's a, um, a Russian immigrant named Peter Karpovich who did some fascinating studies on cardiovascular health. He was the leading exercise physiologist on the planet. And then he got into an intellectual duel with a guy named Bob Hoffman, who uh, was the big sort of strength guy of the time. Bob showed up to Professor Karpovich's uh, university, uh, Springfield College, and basically outdueled him intellectually by bringing a lot of his um, sort of followers who could do extraordinary uh, physical feats. Peter Karpovich did something really extraordinary at that point, and what he did is on the spot, he, as the world's number one exercise physiologist, changed his mind on the spot. That takes a lot to admit that you're wrong. And we, again, go into this deeply in our episode. But what ended up happening is this guy, Bob Hoffman, went on to start something called York Barbell. <laughs> and he also started what we now know as a supplement industry. He had a lot of quirky little things that he was selling to supplement people's fitness, kind of like right now is the current space. I don't think much has changed in 80 years uh, or 70. But the key piece of this is Hoffman went on to battle it out with this guy named Joe Weider. And Joe Weider kind of won because he had a disciple named, you know it, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger uh, ended up really popularizing um, um, muscle building in shortened ranges of motion. So very few exercises were ever done to full ranges of motion. And that um, confounded a lot of people um, prior to, a lot of exercise physiologists, etc., who said, no, you got to move in these functional ways and use a lot of muscles to move joints in full ranges of motion for optimal health. Sounds familiar? Yes. Yeah. Um, so at that time, we get the aesthetic of the health club, the industry that I was to some degree brought up in. Now, all the while, there's this whole periodized um, bias in the strength and conditioning world. Periodized means, or just means basically like you're choosing to put the body through very specific things to get very specific adaptations. CrossFit came along and said, yeah, we're going to kind of mix this whole thing up and put a bunch of things together. And gosh darn it, you're going to be able to have a little bit more endurance and a little bit more strength at the same time. And as we've seen in the industry or the, the space of CrossFit, sometimes that's done really, really well. Sometimes that's done really, in a, well, in a shitty way. Um, people aren't able to sustain it for long periods of time. And there's a lot of reasons why. The interesting thing about all of this is that it, 
provides a fantastic framework for us to understand the things that heavily influence all of us. That is um, everything from advertisements that um, uh, focus on the things that we're going to want to hear or get us to respond to. Um, to, you know, you got to be a badass to do CrossFit. All of it is bullshit, <laughs> truthfully, on one level or another. I think the real sweet spot is to understand the massive history that this is and the mastery context that just understanding the last 150 years provides the framework of how the fitness industry works. And sometimes just taking a few steps back allows us to th see things with a lot more clarity. And what I would like to say is this, we are and have always been a gym that is cutting edge with a population that gets it, that wants to have an advanced conversation. The conversation at this point for us is that we know that periodization works, the thing that CrossFit kicked so hard against. Guess what else works? CrossFit. You know what else works? Bodybuilding and the aesthetic. We want to look good. We want to be functionally able and we want to peak at times when it's really necessary to peak. All of these things have value. None of them necessarily need to be mutually exclusive of one another. I'm doing my damn best to try to understand this and wrap my head around 150 years as best as I can. And as I do, I will do my best to continue to share with you guys. This is a seven minute video, I'm guessing at this point. Yeah, it is. And I know that sometimes we get 12 viewers on these things, of which three make it a minute and a half. I'm praying that three of you watch this whole damn thing and get something from it. And if you do, please take a listen to our Body of Knowledge podcast. This is very, it, it really is important stuff. And I'm going to challenge the rest of the industry because I think there's a lot of noise in it. I think there's a lot of bullshit being sold. And I think a lot of people are being preyed on unnecessarily. And I love all of you, and I can't thank you enough for being a member at our gym. Love you. If you celebrate Easter, happy Easter, and God bless you.